my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting an update from TriStar Gold. The company is advancing one of Brazil's most exciting gold development projects, Castelo de Sonhos, in the mining-friendly Para State, Brazil. The company trades on the TSXV under the symbol TSG. And joining me today is TriStar's president and CEO, Nick Appleyard. It's nice to see you again, Nick. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. It's um, yeah, it's good to be good to be back. And having just got back from PDAC and seen a lot of people, it's a exciting time again to actually interact with people. So just quickly for the listeners who are still new to the TriStar Gold story, could you give everybody an overview of the Stella Sonio Gold project? Okay, absolutely. I'll just use a couple of slides to sort of highlight the main points on this. Uh, of course, I'll be talking about some future plans as we get further into this. So, you know, read the disclaimer. But yeah, Castelo de Sonhos um, is Castle of Dreams, Portuguese translation into English, in central Brazil in the southern port part border of Pará State. Uh, we are in control about 18,000 hectares. Uh, it's a large area. It's in, I mean, I think the biggest, you know, the great things for me is the great location. Pará is the main mining jurisdiction in Brazil. It's the biggest receipt of investment funds in Brazil, and it's the biggest payment of you know, revenue to the government from mining. So it's a great place to be. The government there is very you know, um, you say educated on mining and very you know, understand how to do it properly and, and the benefits of it for their for their economy and for their people. So it's, it's a really good place to be. And, um, you know, and for us, that works really well because, you know, they want us to be there. We tell them what we want to do and, and, and the interaction is fantastic. So, so, you know, it's a good place, great location for us. Then the Stala deposit, we've got the Paleo Plaza, um, analogous deposits around the world for us to learn from. They're generally, they're big. And, um, you know, and they've got this nice big deposit in a good state next to a highway, next to a power line. It's, you know, it's, it, you, you could barely pick a better location for a project. And the fact that it's just been growing, you know, for the last five, six years, it's growing. I think we, on the slide here, it says a factor of eight. I think it's probably closer to 10 now. Um, you know, it's, you know, and we've got this large, start, large project, uh, 1.8 million ounces of resources in the indicator category, an additional 700,000 in the inferred category. And um, a PFS now completes. We've got reserves, which I'll touch on in the next slide, and um, great economics, and and still a lot of work to do, and it's still a lot of lot of um, potential to un uncover. So I'll just to give a quick highlight of where we got it to in our pre-feasibility study, which was announced late last year. Uh, we got 1.4 million ounces of reserves in the in, in the probable category at a grade of 1.1 gram per ton. Um, average production of 120,000 ounces a year. But the, the important factor of that is the, the heart of the project produces at about 150,000 ounces a year. And we think we can expand on that. So, you know, push that rate out further. And, and again, it's simple mining. It's open pit, um, shallow open pit, even 120 meter deep pits, um, you know, a manageable capex that includes most of the inflation we've seen these days. And you're still making an MPV of three hundred twenty million dollars and an all-in sustaining of nine hundred. So it, it, it's a great project in a great location. It's exactly what you look for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this week, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the geology of this gold deposit. Are there any comparables you can provide, and and what's the process of mining like within this geologic setting? Yeah. So the paleoplasts. It's interesting. A lot of geologists haven't worked on them because numerically, they're not a lot of them around the world. Because, but when you find them, they're big. You know, I mean, I think the statistic is something like 40% of the gold ever found has come from Paleoplaces. Obviously, with a big chunk of that coming from the monster with Waters Rand. But we don't like to use that as a comp. It's not fair. That's a, a different beast altogether. But it, it is still a Paleoplasa um, in a lot of textbooks. <laughs> um, but really, with us, we compare ourselves to Jacobina and Taqua. They're the same age, a little bit younger than with Waters Rand. <clears throat> and, um, a very, very similar geologically. Um, and, and actually, Taiko is good because it's actually similar in its attitude as it sits in the ground now. So we can just learn about the geology uh, and the metallurgy. It's also the mining practices we can look at from that as well. But, you know, you can see the sort of side by side here on the, you know, the, the geology, the mineral presence, the, the bedding, um, the mineral thicknesses. It's very, very similar. And the ages are identical. And, um, yeah, and there's a pretty good reason for that. There was a, there was a time in the world, you know, two billion years ago when um, these deposits were forming. And, um, you know, it's like a little map here looking at the South Pole um, 2.1 billion years ago. And you can see one large continent there and Taqua and Castello de Sonia is quite close to each other. Primary deposits in a mountain range going along the spine of that continent. 
and um, you know, and that's now broken up and become Brazil and you know, other parts of South America and, and West and Southern Africa. Um, but these deposits were formed then, like I said, there's not a lot of them. They're, they're nearly always big when we find them. <clears throat> uh, just to give people, I know some people I think have problems with the context on the age of this. We're talking two to 2.1 billion years old. Just to give a, a bit of an idea, dinosaurs died out about 65 million years ago. So you're talking like over 20 times further back than the dinosaurs were. So, I mean, this is very early in Earth's history. Right. So what that means to us geologically is that one, <clears throat> we now understand the, the deposition of the deposit, how it looked at that stage. And you've sort of got a, a diagram here of a, um, a fan delta in New Zealand. And this is pretty well what the, how these deposits form. Sometimes you'll have multiple of them interacting with each other. Uh, and once you understand the, the morphology of that delta, you, you can then relay that to um, you know, what we see in the ground now so like on the on the, on the left there you're sort of seeing more of a cross section through a, a theoretical deposit you can see something in this area here right. and we can correlate that and say okay that formed at this part of the deposit and then that allows us to know exactly where to go to find what we consider the sweet spot there there are sweet spots in these where energy was just right to deposit more gold than in the other places but gold is deposited all the way through them so um, understanding that model is, is critical to us, but that is what we looked at. And um, you know, another modern analogy that people might be able to understand is if they ever watch those TV shows, the guys in Alaska running around with machinery looking for the last ounce of gold to make the, make the year worthwhile, <laughs> yeah. they're, probably, they're probably working on modern versions of these types of deposits, you know. Um, right. So they're still being formed in places, but not at this size and scale. <clears throat> um, so, you know, this is sort of what we what we look at, and what, you know, what we are lucky with at Costello is that we have um, these colors, so we can see them, you know, the conglomerate, you know, outcropping on the ground, and we can see the direction that the beddings were in, but right from surface. So it's very good geology to see, um, allows us to study it really well and, and bring that information from Tarqua, from Jacobina, that, you know, that we can learn from their public disclosure, learn from the consultants that have seen and, and, and um, academics which have worked on all of the deposits and apply them to this. So you're, you're not learning everything from scratch. And that, that's been a, a real help for us as well. Um, you know, and again, I've said these are generally big. You know, you're gonna see that in these next few slides. We've just scratched the surface here at Castella de Sonias, and that's one of the most exciting um, aspects of it. The other one being that they're actually also very, very clean and ESG is, is a bigger issue for all the companies now. Um, because of the way these were formed, it was like the, the rock was basically washed. You end up with nothing but sand and the quartz cobbles and fine grains of gold. Uh, no sulfides, no, you know, very few other or almost no other deleterious elements at all. So it's a very clean deposit, which also makes it very simple and cheap metallurgically. So it, there's a lot of benefits to these types of deposits. Again, this is now so how we start to look at <clears throat> Castello de Sonnet specifically. You know, we have a, a profile built up where we can see, okay, there's cobble units, there's the main cobble reefs that we're looking for. Um, and we can start to identify that and by very, you know, minor variations in geochemistry sometimes or by geology looking at it directly. But again, we can relate all of this back to that fan delta picture. And, and, you know, and that's how we build up this story. And, um, and in truth, how we built the story up five, six years ago to understand the full size potential. Because one thing I, I mentioned earlier is once you understand that system, that fan delta, there's a fan there, there's gold coming in the top, there's only one force at work and it's gravity. So if you believe in gravity, the gold's got to go downhill in the water and it'll keep going downhill. <laughs> it can't turn around and go back up. Right. Um, so, so it becomes relative, you know, geologically speaking, relatively simple to understand, okay, it's got to keep going down here, you know? <clears throat> so, you know, this is now the, you know, surface view of, of Castello de Sonios. And what we were trying to show here is, you know, you've got probably eight kilometers across the known area, the, the yellow, um, the yellow outlines here we're showing are where we've, we've got gold in soil. So we know there's gold in the soil and on the surface there. And again, this is outcropping rock. So the soil hasn't transported a long way. It's from very close to there. 
And what you can see here in the this sort of pinky color, the sort of circles, is a hundred meter radius around all of our drilling. So, you know, if, if there's not a pink circle around it, there's no drilling done there at all. And you can show that most of this deposit doesn't isn't within a hundred meters of a drill hole. Um, so there's a lot more potential to, to find. And um, yeah, and the other thing that's worth talking about here, you can sort of see it looks sort of round, a donut shape. It's because the, <clears throat> the original fan has just sort of sunk and what we're seeing here is parts of that fan that now just cut the surface. But this is what we look at a lot these days now. So the, the tan orange color inside are the pre-feasibility pits. And you can see, so everywhere we've drilled, we've now got a pit that's you know, coming into our pre-feasibility study. Um, and you know, when we've drilled in the, in the yellow area where we've got golden soil, we end up having a pit. And there's a whole lot of it we haven't drilled yet. There's a lot of work still to do and a lot of potential. And with this style of geology, with um, fresh rock coming to surface, you don't really get a signature on surface in soils from a buried part of the deposit. So where there's no gold on the surface in the soils doesn't mean there's no gold underneath. It just means there's no gold on surface in the rocks. <clears throat> so there's a lot, a lot of potential here that we, you know, that we really want to uncover. That's great. And um, this is this is a slide I like. It's it's a little hard to understand, and hopefully people will bear with me. Um, but up on the top here, you can see that is our pre-feasibility study pit, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can see some drill holes coming through the the gold line, you know, the gold horizons going down through there. That's what we've been working on. That's what the focus of everything has been um, on. Oh, take that off there again. Yeah, so the gold horizons coming down through there. Um, that's all of our focus has been on that and all of our drilling has been. The bottom image here is, um, is the same cross section. I've just zoomed out so we can see the other side of the project as well. And you can see the other side of the project, the same rocks that outcrop in the pits here, outcrop over there. And, that, and there will be a gold soil anomaly there, that, that yellow outline will be there. And it goes all the way down. There's all of this potential. Some of it might be too deep. Some of it might be the wrong attitude. Some of it might be lower grade. But there is so much that is just untapped. I mean, this is eight kilometers across from from you know from the sort of east to, to west or um, south east west and south north ugh, northwest to southeast. <laughs> um, and uh, and there's just so much untapped potential here that we you know we are really working on you can sort of see the way it zooms in you know there's, there's that tiny little corner is is, is the pre-feasibility study pit at Estra and south with a uh, million ounces in it um so the potential is massive that we're still working on here and um you know we'll really be excited to you know as well as advancing those pits to permitting you know getting into some more exploration and expanding them and growing this project and and, and unt untapping that greater potential that's great. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for telling us all about Castello de Sonos. Mm -hmm. um, good luck on your upcoming drilling program. And we look forward to hearing more from the company in the very near future. Yeah, absolutely. The drilling is coming up fairly soon, hopefully. And um, hopefully when it does, we'll be able to put another little video together and, and tell people, focus in on those targets and tell them what we're going to be drilling at. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.